नमस्ते एंड वेलकम टू द फेस्टिवल ऑफ भारत दिस इज दिव्यांशी शारदा योर होस्ट द गेस्ट फॉर टुडे शो इज सम विदे हु डज नॉट रियली नीड एन इंट्रोडक्शन बट एज वी ऑल नो ही इज श्री तारिक फतेह जी Uh, who happens to be a Pakistani Canadian columnist for the Toronto Sun and the author of the book The Tragic Illusion of an Islamic State. He is a Marxist who has been a vocal critic of Islamism for the past 5 decades. Tariq ji namaste and welcome to our show. Thank you for having me. Thank you. We truly honored to have you here with us. Oh, so, not sir, at all. Ji. Dhanyawad. so uh, you are really vocal about the current israel palestine issue that took place very recently so regarding the same uh, you have written a lot about this you've spoken a lot about this for our viewers sake could you please tell us a bit about the history of this conflict well it uh, it all depends how far back uh, you wish to go uh, but uh, to sum it up this is a uh, territory or land um, that uh, it was home to uh, the jews uh, since the time of moses and uh, he, uh, you know the freeing of the slaves from um, the pharaohs of egypt and walking through the sinai and the references are there to his movement uh, in the old testament which is the torah uh, and and even in the quran um uh, plus it, it is a uh, it is a recognized fact that the residents of that area historically were the jewish people not as a people who follow judaism i'm not talking of religion i'm, I'm simply mm-hmm. talking of a people uh, for example the persians are a people or the arabs are a people or the indians are a people uh, that is uh, how the jews are a people who lived in this area but were um as monotheists uh, were a thorn in the side of uh, the romans or even the persians who uh, at different times invaded the territory and destroyed the temples and they got scattered around the globe to the extent that some of them live uh, sought refuge in southern india as well uh, near cochin there is still a um, synagogue to their name they uh, uh, elsewhere in mumbai or in karachi or in even in uh, in peshawar which is northwest area they were known as no the mumbai karachi people are known as the bani israel and then there were jews even living in the northwestern territories of uh, india in peshawar which is now in pakistan who uh, were driven there after the russian revolution on during the second world war so they they were scattered around the world but there has always been a jewish population in that area now as far as historically is concerned this is their territory just as the territory of uh, persia is for persians or uh, arabia is for the arabs however in the year 636 uh i'm trying to cut it short that's the first time that the arabs invade uh this place and uh, uh muslims are quite proud of the fact that the second caliph that is umar or hazrat umar as we say led an army and occupied those territories and on top of the jewish temple built a ramshackle mosque a wooden structure that would later be called referred to as masjid e aqsa uh, because there are references references of um, what muslims believe is the flight of prophet muhammad to the skies and they say the steed or the horse on which he was stopped over uh, in masjid e aqsa but the masjid that they call masjid e aqsa was built much later so uh, it, it's a convenient connecting of of uh, um, you know, facts to make that place holy for muslims as well for jews it is their homeland for christians it is the place where jesus uh, was born and walked and jesus himself was a jew uh, and persecuted by uh, the by the romans and that is where the old testament and the new testament come in but the 
historical claim by Arabs that this is our territory, which foreign Jews came to settle in, needs to be taken with a bit of salt. It is a fact that those who, uh, those who are not today known as Palestinians, and at that time were uh, Arabs of that area, the word Palestine was in the 20s and 30s associated with how Jews in, um, around the world used to refer to uh, this uh, place. Palestine, the letter P does not even have an occurrence in the Arabic language. Uh, Palestine is the word that was used, but it came into usage much later. At the time when pa India was partitioned, British India was partitioned, there's a place called British Palestine, uh, which was carved out of the Turkish uh, Caliphate, during which time the Turks colonized the Arabs, and at that time they were as Muslim Khalifas were in charge of Jerusalem, but never shifted their capital over there, never recognized it as such. And if you go back even to the times of the prophet, he in fact, in the middle of a prayer, turned his back on Jerusalem and said that uh, the, the Muslim holy place is Mecca. And he turned, uh, prior to that, he would, he would lead the Muslims in prayer towards Jerusalem. Uh, and that ended that period. Now, th those are the historical facts that cannot be denied, which many Muslims do deny. But even if both sides are true, the fact is that Israel as a state and Arabs are a people or the PLO as an organization have an agreement signed in Oslo under which both sides agree to a two-state solution in the territories that were lost by Jordan to Israel during the 1967 war. Prior to that, all this area had no Jewish settlements. There was no, no residence. There was uh, you know, uh, no counterclaim. And there could have been a Palestinian state if the Jordanians or the Egyptians wanted Gaza and the West Bank to be one. It didn't happen. And once the Egyptians recognized Israel uh, with establishing diplomatic relations, the whole concept of a conflict between the Arab world and Israel, in my opinion, came to an end. The main protagonists in this war uh, were uh, the, the Egyptian army, primarily the main force of the Arab world, versus Israel and the 67 war. Uh, in 48, about 10 uh, armies from uh, the Arab world attacked uh, Israel uh, because the United Nations divided British Palestine, which had already been divided by giving Jordan as a separate country because they needed a place for the kings of Mecca. Uh, because they had no land, the Saudis had taken over that place. Uh, this might all sound very confusing to you or your listeners. But Transjordan was a country drawn out on a piece of paper. Jordan is just a river. It's not a country. Similarly, Lebanon was not a country. It was carved out of Syria or Bilad Sham, as, uh, as the name of that country is. And these uh, were drawn out on a piece of paper between the foreign ministers of Britain and France and after the First World War and designated as independent countries. So Palestine, Greater Palestine or British Palestine had already been divided with one part being called Jordan, which even today has 90% of its population is Palestinian. But after the 67 war, the, uh, the Egyptians sought peace with uh, Israel, as did the Jordanians. And the war on those two fronts finished. There has never been a clash between these two. In, and, and just to put a context uh, to your listeners, the biggest massacre of Palestinians has never been done by 
uh, Israel, but it has been done by a gentleman called Brigadier Ziaul Haq, who then happened to be later Pakistan's uh, uh, ruler, who hanged uh, Prime Minister Bhutto, and then became the uh, introduction, uh, introduced the whole notion of the Islamic State within the whole world. So the main killing ever that has happened has happened by the Jordanian army led by a Pakistani general and a Pakistan air force killing 20,000 Palestinian, uh, what called freedom fighters. So uh, when people become sanctimonious about, oh, our solidarity is with the Palestinians, the Pakistanis should be the last people who should uh, talk about it. India has always had uh, historically good relations with the Arab world and has stood by the Arab world, but they've never really cut off their relationships uh, with Israel. There is an Indian population, the Bani Israel, who live in, uh, uh, in cities. Um, it's a tiny country. If you go there, you can go from one end of the border to the sea in probably a half an hour. It's not uh, from an Indian context, it is not even Noida. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's very tiny. So that's the background. And the Palestinians today have a right to a state of their own, not because of any historical wrongdoing that has happened. And if it has happened, it has happened because the Arabs uh, uh, lost the wars, attacked a new state. If they had followed the 1948 partition, Palestine or the Arab uh, areas uh, of British Palestine would have been a thriving state, uh, you know, with their own port. Uh, Jerusalem would have been a UN uh, governed territory with no occupation by anyone. But they refused and they attacked Israel, as uh, uh, Israel on its part accepted the partition. And, but were attacked. And so subsequently, Israel became much larger than the UN had sanctioned it to be. Now, we can't first condemn the UN declaration uh, a division and then claim that we want it exactly the way it was. Um, um, I'll take it if I win and I'll take it if I lose. Uh, does not apply uh, in the real politics uh, of the world. So today, the answer would be the creation of a Palestinian state on the West Bank. Uh, I would say even a three-state solution because Gaza is a completely different uh, uh, culture that has evolved out of the massive killing by Hamas of the Palestinian uh, administration's officials over there. So today, the government of the Palestinians is based in Ramallah under uh, Abu Mazin, who was elected for five years and is now in his 15th year in power. And all their representatives after the election were killed by Hamas, not by Israelis. So these three entities, my, my understanding is that Gaza has reason to be an independent state on its own. And West Bank, uh, can certainly be in the territories that are controlled by the Israelis. I, I really believe that the settlements should not be built anymore. And where they've constructed the wall, they should declare the border and finish the conflict. You can't keep on fighting and losing a war, getting your own people killed, and then use that method as the basis of a future uh, action. Your leadership must be pretty rotten to think that, oh, this is the way that we will get freedom by killing our own people or getting our people killed. It's not gonna happen. Uh, the Israelis have, have no place to go. The Arabs have, what, 22 countries. One would argue there should be one Arab country. You know, you can't have uh, tiny uh, little spots here and there with and half a million people fighting to their death in Yemen, and then talk about that the Israelis are, are the enemy. You are your own enemy when you kill your own people. In uh, Syria, half a million people have died 
where Muslims have been fighting each other. Muslim Arabs have been killing Muslim Arabs. So no one from outside is going to come to help you cure from your madness if you say this madness is a sign of our intellect. So to sum it up, that's not necessarily or entirely uh, exactly how uh, one could table it, but for your listeners, this would be um, a fair idea. Now, what I'm saying is would be rejected outrightly by um, perhaps not the Arabs, but the Muslims in India and uh, the Muslims in Pakistan who have their own constructs because they deny their own identity. You see, they, they, they live in the Indian subcontinent, which is Hindustan, but they deny that fact that they're Hindustanis by, uh, by adhering to the culture or the naming uh, conventions that come from overseas. Ashok Nam Katuni, Muslim Miltana, to so there is an identity crisis within the subcontinent, Indian subcontinent Muslims as to who they are. And when they look at Palestine, they find everything uh, as a part of their own victimhood, but they can't see that victimhood when they look at China, which has put a, a, a million Muslims in concentration camps or they do not look at Muslims in Bangladesh when Pakistan killed uh, 3 million in 71, or what the Pakistanis are doing in uh, Balochistan today. So for them, when a Muslim kills a fellow Muslim, that's okay. You know, they, in their mind, when uh, they kill the grandson of the prophet, well, so what? They're even fighting over that in Yemen today. But other people, based on any uh, set of rules, dare not criticize the idiotic nature of our struggle or say that you're doing something seriously wrong. You need to come to some understanding what that this is the 21st century, not the 12th. And we just claim that, well, it's a question of shifting digits, you have two one, and we have one two. And <laughs> since one and two are in series, therefore we must be right. Uh, I don't want to be dismissive, but we are in bad shape as a community, as a Muslim community. Uh, whereas uh, I'm talking the subcontinent Muslims, whereas if you go to Indonesia, if you go to Turkey, they have their own interests first. They are tur first Turks or Persians or Javanese or uh, Mindanaoans, or uh, you know, Albanians, or uh, Chechens. But when we come to this part, where despite a thousand years of plundering and ruling, the majority population is still Hindu, so that hasn't yet gone over well in the psyche of those who believe that our duty is to make the entire world come under Islamic rule. Very true, sir. I mean, the way you have encapsulated this entire mindset is quite impressive because it really speaks. It's not impressive, it's very depressive. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> it is, that is also true. You are right on that. I mean, it is very saddening to see how we have become so disconnected with our Muslim brothers and sisters in our own country and how there is such a big gap between our ideological leanings, something which we are trying our best to bridge, at least in our own efforts and in our own ways. So, sir, uh, with regards to uh, the way you have so wonderfully described the Israel-Palestine situation, and then you spoke about how India is in somewhat a similar situation with regards to the identity crisis that the Muslim population is suffering. So uh, in which other ways do you feel that India's situation is similar to Israel? Because a lot of people seem to think that it is. I, I, I don't think so. Uh, Indians have never been kicked out of their own land ever. India has... Uh, it's, the oldest civilization on earth, 
everybody has come uh, to take it over and uh, like quicksand they get uh, sucked into India. I mean, I still have relatives who are Anglo-Indians, you know. Um, um, they came here, my grandmother was French. They came, they became Indian. <laughs> Everyone came to India to become Indian, except that when the British wanted to mess up with India, they created a Pakistan by making Mr. Jinnah, uh, who, uh, who was a member of parliament from Mumbai, to represent people with whom he couldn't even speak, which is Bengal and Punjab. So uh, we, uh, India cannot be compared. India has uh, never suffered an expulsion of its uh, uh, people uh, into another land. There are issues of theories about the Aryan invasion, fine. All the Aryans, if, uh, whether I believe it or not, are living with the same, they eat the same biryani, they eat the same chutney and, uh, you know, alu chole, whatever. Mm -hmm. They're all part of us. I mean, the Zoroastrians can eat uh, 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 the food that we eat, and but the place where they come from, which is uh, Persia, people can't handle even a bit of uh, green chilies. So <laughs> our ancient culture embraces everyone into one large pool of diversity. We've got 20, what, 29 states, 400 languages. Uh, you know, every, one, every Hindu has their own God and there are still so many to spare. But in the <laughs> middle of it, you come and say, though, there's only one, therefore I will uh, burn down uh, Nalanda University and uh, then people have the audacity to say, well, Bakhtiar Khilji was a very wise man. <laughs> he burned down a university for crying out loud. He has no place in, uh, in India's history. So the, what is unique about India is the lack of bitterness towards or the lack of obliviousness to what happened. So you still have uh, Lodi Gardens. Nobody can have Lodi Gardens if they were even slightly conscious of their, uh, the atrocities committed by Lodi. Uh, you, you know, you have Aurangzeb and Aurangabad and Hyderabad and all that by people who came to kill us. <laughs> you know, we can think about Tipu Sultan as an Indian guy who fought the British, but he too was obsessed with pan-Islamism. This smarter guy of a later age uh, took aid from the French to fight the British, hats off to him, but then he, he had this obsession of going south and creating an Islamic empire there. This notion of wherever a Muslim goes, to change it into Islamic lands uh, is an obsession that has uh, east, uh, on the east of Delhi, you have a different form where a place like Bengal has no uh, borders with any other Muslim country. Uh, it, it, it is unique in that way, but everywhere else they're connected to each other and they progressively go and uh, the largest Muslim country today is Indonesia. Um, and uh, they have this don't seem to have any problem with the Hindu uh, ancestry and the culture. They have Garuda Airlines and they have Ganesh on the Lord Ganesh on the currency note. I keep repeating this. The president of uh, Indonesia's grandson is uh, name is Narinda. You can't have that. <laughs> but now, at least in Saudi Arabia, they are teaching Ramayan and Mahabha, uh, uh, Bharat in, in the school system. But you can't do it in Pakistan, <laughs> where, these, where these events, uh, uh, Krukshetra is right there in Punjab. You cut it off and say, that, that's Haryana. Mm. No, but it's the same place. The same five rivers are coming together. It happened over there, but you will find not a single Pakistani who knows anything about that because they are 
uh, imbibed in an identity crisis, which puts them as in, uh, taking pride in those who invaded their country, which was by any chance Hindustan, from Kandahar, uh, you know, that is, those are all Buddhist lands, you know, Indian, even Peshawar's name was different. They are not conscious of their identity at all. So that is why they cling to something that is Palestine. But if you tell them, what about the Uyghurs? Oh, it has come down to that level of immorality. You're openly saying that if you give us money, we'll be silent. We won't say a thing. You can keep killing our people. But those people over there, we find it pleasurable that we can take out a procession, ride horses with eight century swords. And if you've seen those videos of our Karachi women on horseback with spears running to fight Israel. My God. So I've never ever seen Indian Muslims protest outside the Chinese embassy. Whereas a million Muslims in concentration camps, everyone in the world is horrified. Very true. Very true, sir. And this is actually, like you said, this is really saddening because this hypocrisy within the Islamic community is... This is, hypocrisy is even in the Hindu community. Mm -hmm. Don't 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 uh, try to rise as the oh no country. oh we, no not at all. You have Lodi Gardens. <laughs> Muslims didn't call it Lodi Gardens. You said, oh, that is Lodi Gardens. Oh, I love this spelling. Let's put a shoka inside the garden. <laughs> we can't call it a shoka uh, road or Lodi inside somewhere. It we reverse it. For right. us, Lodi is bigger than a shoka. <laughs> so, so this uh, oh, this common gene of being idiots or not <laughs> having courage or not having uh, a spine and lying is shared <laughs> all Pakistanis are descendants of Hindus the, I don't know of any army that came with female soldiers so everyone who was born had a Hindu mother, even Akbar, even Aurangzeb, everyone had a Hindu mother. No, 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 no. We have no Hindu blood. Oh, oh my God. It's clearly <laughs> saying I was born irrespective that I was in the womb of a Hindu mother for nine months. No, it had no effect on me. You need an awakening in which hate is out of the equation. Now, that's yes. the difficult task. You can't yeah. become rabid and become exactly like your, your uh, enemy. You have to rise to a level and say, this Lodi road is gone. Uh, Ayodhya has been built. Court case, Larna Lado, Babar was never born, never died here. Get the hell out of here. There are people who are scared. The heart of the Muslim will break. How will it break? Every mosque in India, you curse Hindus every Friday. You pray that, uh, Ya Allah, Musliman ko kome kafreen pe pata nasib par. What does that mean? You're praying in India with government subsidized mosques for praying for the defeat of those who do not believe in Islam. At least you can go knock on the door and say, Bhai, ye kya bola tumne? You just paid for my destruction and then you're asking for funds for your madrasas. Who taught you all this nonsense and what are these madrasas doing when the when Islam was completed, when the, uh, 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 when the Prophet died, 
when the Quran was completed, it was compiled. There are other questions to it. But why is there something called Barelvi and Diobandi, which create uh, Taliban, the Diobandis created the Taliban and the Barelvis are cre created this Labbaik who said, yeah, uh, Rasulullah, that party, Pakistan, yeah, the, the ones who hold these big conferences in Dhaka with close to a million people swaying their heads around. Even in uh, Allahabad and all these places, this is taking place. You can't knock any sense in their, uh, in their head. Any Muslim who raises something about it, he is destined to be killed. Yes. The fatwas, so people like our governor in, in Kerala would just be quiet, you know, for his own life. Mm -hmm. So many brilliant Muslims in India, like uh, the Maulana Wahiduddin, who recently passed away. Mm. Tons and tons. Of, they have no space. <laughs> They can't say anything. Mm -hmm. If you're ugly and if you are wearing that definition of bade bhai ka kurta or chote bhai ka pajama, then you get straight to the prime minister's house, a meeting officially with all the officials, everyone's bowing to you. If you're just a normal guy, you know, you know, 30 year old, you're partying in Mumbai, nobody's going to say, oh, that's a Muslim leader. No. Mm -hmm. In your idea, a Muslim leader should be, should at least appear ugly and stupid <laughs> and dress up weirdly because they, ah, that looks like an authentic Muslim. This <laughs> guy, I, I'm not ugly enough to be considered authentic. This is, this is how the world has seen. No scientist is referred to, uh, you wouldn't go to Parve, uh, Professor Parvez Woodboy and talk of him as a Muslim. No. He's an MIT scientist, but had he been ugly and worn his uh, bedroom attire to the United Nations Council, like Im the Dim Imran Khan did, then he would say he's a Muslim leader. Apne bedroom ke kapro ko national dress bana diya. <laughs> I never saw this. I lived there 30 years. Who works with the Shalwar Kameez to the United Nations Security Council? This is what we wear when we go to bed. <laughs> and then they wear a Western jacket over it. Have you noticed that? <laughs> which is which comes up to slightly above the the, the kameez. Mm -hmm. kurta shalwar pen it, I would accept it. Yeah, Westerners ki kameez, upper tie ka collar, or niche <laughs> shalwar, or kameez by nikli. Are bhai. You'll never find an Arab dressed in half Western and half uh, Arab clothes. You won't find Iranians. Ayatollahs will wear what Ayatollahs wear. Mm -hmm. We are the only people who dress up somewhere midway. <laughs> pajama, jacket, two people. You know, it's like putting your baseball hat at the back. Oh, yes. and, oh God, help us. <laughs> I'm 71 now. We would we would definitely not let anything like that happen. So it's not like that. Thank you. Oh, but uh, it, it was yes, very enlightening. So thank you so much for that. <laughs> So, uh, so if I was, uh, if I were to continue and ask you a related question uh, regarding uh, India's approach to uh, anti-terrorism in its own country, so do you think that India is doing enough to curb Islamism? I don't think so, because of the same reason as I said earlier on, that if you feel that uh, the Muslim vote bank will go elsewhere, uh, that 10 to 15 percent can have drastic effects in certain constituencies. You've seen that in West Bengal, where Mamtaji's party members were, had green topis and green flags. Uh, so it was a good use of the Muslim population to its effect. Mm -hmm. 
uh, who's going to stand up against uh, terrorism uh, if you cannot identify terrorism in its current form worldwide and equate it to sir ke wo to america ne bhi bombing ki thi to aap us pe nahi bole the you know what about his entire me when your belief system says that the destruction of hindustan is your destiny which we call ghazwa e hind and the end of times will not begin until india and hinduism and hindu temples are destroyed if this is your belief and your life you genuinely believe begins after you die when you go to paradise or heaven uh, and the world comes to an end that is what you aspire to the nature of our way of considering what is life is very linear as compared to uh, say the hindus or the maybe perhaps even the jain of uh, you know cyclical events of the atma being where it is we view it from a very different construct so we don't know how to tackle uh, uh, extremism muslim extremism must be tackled by muslim leadership when a non muslim takes on that leadership he becomes george bush the idiot bombed iraq because pakistan based terrorist attack uh, uh, 9 11 uh, did committed 9 11 sochiye na that means there was nobody around I'm saying sir all of them were saudis all trained by bin laden who lives in pakistan no 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 let's go to iraq and bomb the crap out of them and make them all extremists so whatever what was the product you created isis over okay. there who thought that al qaeda was very bad now you have in mozambique a place like mozambique having isis terrorists india did something very early on which still hasn't been put into effect is the definition of terrorism india has never identified pakistan as a state sponsor of terrorism if that should be the first thing india should do this is a state sponsor of terrorism we want to place sanctions on it the world doesn't want to do it let them go but you commit any offense against bharat on your borders to people you send over here or the propaganda that you have or how you kill people who are pro india or you kill the hindus and convert the christians or send them to china as uh, sex workers all of that is not becoming of a state but if it is a state policy and it is india's neighbor and india is a rising uh, world uh, power then india needs to first clean up its shores you know just abhi sri lanka ke uh, beaches pe all that plastic has ended up pakistan is similarly contamination that is lying on the western side of india it will as long as the thought that we are going to come back as mogul emperors is not erased from the psyche not the genuine thought if if you love babar you are the enemy of india if aurangzeb is the greatest thing you ever thought about and every pakistani wants to be aurangzeb then for oh, what what does india think the worst man who ruled india is the is a hero for pakistanis ye itna 6 7 8 100 years se this hostility is there that needs to be cleansed and that will only in india it can only be reflected if indian muslims have indian names indian muslims have arab names they don't have their own names koi bhi nahi hai so turks have their own names you don't find abdullah naam ka koi turk ho you know you have erdogan that is no arab can pronounce it iranians have their own name 
Indonesians have their own name. Why is it that subcontinent Muslims need to have Arab names? Oh, correct, he can, like in 100%. It shows you the level of contempt you have for the land on which you live. Lord is not some, Lord is only temporarily out of the reach of Indian civilization. Na? This is our city. And there is no Hindu living in Lahore. Every Indian city has about 10 to 15 percent Muslim population. You go to any city in Pakistan, you will. If you put up a sign, reward, I want to meet a Hindu in Karachi in the next. One week, there will be nobody there. Sabko <laughs> maar diya. Or uh, you, you, you need to have trade talks. Now, Francois Gautier has written something about this. He said, what is needed is a spine. Ye well-mannered, Lucknow-style ka leadership ke aada <laughs> kaise hain aap huzi kuch ashaad suna dijiye. Na. He said, we can't uh, get, get it out of here. So India Very, uh, is not taking care of the, the terrorist threat, nor is it conscious of how to do it. Very true, sir. And we should definitely get a more proactive approach because hopefully things are changing for the better slowly. But uh, we should definitely uh, accelerate the process by great amounts, that's for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, a question that uh, probably many of our viewers might be having in mind with regards to you specifically would be your personal experience with Islam, Hindus, and India. So, when exactly in the point of time in your life did you realize that whatever you have been told about India and Hindus is uh, in fact not truth uh, by the state of Pakistan. When did this realization dawn upon you? I was quite young. I think the 1965 war, just after that, uh, when uh, as a 15-year-old, I would hear that uh, angels are descending from heaven and when the Indians bomb Pakistan, the angels catch the bomb and drop it in the river Ravi. And I said, that doesn't look <laughs> That's not credible. <laughs> and that, uh, I, I, uh, we used to get the Times of India. Um, I had just started college September 1st, 1965. And in the college library is where we would get the Times of India. And at that time, the Pakistani infiltrators had already got in, into um, Indian administered Kashmir and uh, what was called Operation Gibraltar. So uh, I would go first thing in the morning to read what had happened because the, it gave you uh, the other side of the story. And then on the day of the war, uh, 6 September, the newspapers stopped. Uh, and uh, we suddenly, I, I personally felt that I was, uh, uh, I was caught in a situation where I had only one thing to hear. So we used to get Akashwani and uh, Doodarshan uh, at that time, shortwave radio. That was considered an act of, uh, you know, traitorship if you're listening to that. So it was more out of curiosity and uh, I had lived most of my child life with, uh, in an area where um, almost 100% of the residents were immigrants who had come from UP and Bihar and um, Hyderabad and Bhopal, the Urdu speaking Pakistani. And I realized that they were more hostile to India than uh, the people of, say, Sindh, uh, who were the actual residents of <laughs> Karachi. And so it 
just makes you think two, three times, oh, 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 what's the reality? Uh, thank goodness for the British uh, Council that had a huge library, and including the American uh, in Information Service. In center, anyway, they had huge libraries in Karachi. I would, after college, I, I started visiting uh, these libraries and I, um, I started reading up. And you won't believe it, the first serious book I read was my father's edition of Savarkar's 1857 War of Independence. I didn't know. Uh, anything that this was a controversial figure or what he was, but it was in my dad's library. He was a reader and a, a, a good student of history, but very, very anti-Indian after he migrated from Mumbai. I still have his full page article against India written in a newspaper in Karachi. But that gave me a consciousness that we were actually Indians. So, and um, the fact that Jinnah couldn't speak any Pakistani language was <laughs> incredible. <laughs> <laughs> and then the first thought that made me feel that there's something rotten about this is how the people of West Pakistan would treat the people of East Pakistan, which is today Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. They were politically far ahead of us. And our interaction between them, because the country had interwing uh, scholarships and a lot of Bangladeshi students used to study in Karachi University um, uh, or in, lived amongst us, that triggered different. Then there was, you know, left wing organizations the student wing of the Communist Party of Pakistan, which was the NSF, National Students Federation. Those are the people who made me aware that this is utter nonsense, you know. You know, angels don't come to as anti-aircraft fire. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one looked at war and the uh, invasions and plundering of India from a different sense. Once you understand that uh, Pakistanis had infiltrated uh, Jammu and Kashmir and all, the entire population was lied. And not only that, the operation was called Gibraltar, mm -hmm. which as you know, is the mispronounced word for Jabal al tariq These are when in the year the Muslims invaded India and Sindh, they also mm -hmm. invaded Gibraltar, uh, uh, Spain and uh, collected under the rock, which the leader was Tariq ibn Ziyad. He was a Berber general. So Gibraltar means uh, the invasion yeah. of Spain. So here you had the Pakistan army infiltrating India under the guise of Kashmiri freedom fighters. Mm -hmm. And that title was not Kashmir or, or anything about India, but Gibraltar you suddenly realize that even in your own uh, uh, mementos that you're creating with other people, you're boring, of, boring from. Then it came to understand, me to understand that my parents had named me Tariq, which by the way, later on found out is a Sanskrit word, but that's different. But my younger brother was Mahmud from Mahmud Ghazni. So the whole system of approaching India and the non-Muslim world as places that our armies would go and plunder is, is horrifying. And if you're wondering where uh, it's one of the words, Tarak, uh, Tara, uh, hota hai, usse hai ye. it's one of the few Sanskrit words that goes into Arabic, the early morning star. Tara, Sitara, Tarek, they, they all come from India. So, look, I said that I changed my name. 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 Let's go. 
should we, is that all or should we uh, oh oh sir i i thought you were completing the sentence no yes, no my, my thoughts are random always <laughs> that but that's a wonderful story so i had no clue that your name actually uh, is the sanskrit derivation that's beautiful tarak se hai na thoda aur research kariye no. thank you so much for saying that hmm. Anjay. So, sir, uh, another very interesting question that pops up into my mind, uh, at least, is that we generally find in the West nowadays that there is a kind of a nexus between the left, uh, the Western left, and the Islamic coalition. So, why is this exactly taking place? What connection does the Western left have with the Islamic right, that is? it's anti americanism uh, primarily so if you notice that when the shah of iran was overthrown and the mullahs came to power uh, those were the first mistakes made by the left around the world that they supported the overthrow of the shah which was fine of course mm -hmm. but the fight against the dictatorship of the shah of iran was uh, fronted by the multiple levels of communist and socialist parties in in I iran but today which was the cpi in in I iran had close relationships at that time with the soviet union mm -hmm. and the soviet union dictated many of the policies that were conducted by many of the communist parties whether it was in angola or whether it was in uh, shikarno's time or whether it was the cpi and then the further division between cpi and cpm so this sort of a direction taken by two day to support uh, the overthrow and for air france to fly in ayatollah khomeini to take over that was a strategic mistake for which the whole world is paying a price even now and most of all the iranian people their revolution to bring democracy and freedom to the people became the first time that an entire country was put in a cage and told that you will be whipped and killed if you step out of the bounds and that is what iran is till today uh, and at that time uh, just to give you an example the cpi supported Uh, the steps of the Iranian Revolution. Uh, many of us were happy that the Shah had gone, but we knew that what was coming was horrendous, because uh, 79 is also the year when Ziaul Haq enters. Mm -hmm. 79 is also the year when Nur Muhammad Taraki of Afghanistan. is killed in his uh, bedroom by Hafizul Amin by putting a pillow over him and three major events took place uh, that triggered in the in 1979 uh, the the climax of the cold war and so if islamists were fighting america the left had to support them because they themselves had been weakened by the lack of uh, liberty or individual rights in the soviet union or china or wherever there was if you were a dissident you were finished whether you were sharansky or whether you were a soljenitsyn you had to escape from there so the place that promised equality of human beings and free thinking uh, by the bolshevik revolution suddenly became a, a, a what you concentration camp for under stalin and so mm -hmm. you could not have independent thinking societies that do not allow independent thinking rot and die that is why you are a 10000 year old civilization so you have 50000 gods you know sab chalenge jis ko jo marzi hai kare hamara bhi 1000 saal hua hai bolo bas ek hai kisi ne bola to aisa marenge usko theek ho jayega But anyway so the left today is no longer the left after the end of the cold war now you only have millionaires who are marxist mm -hmm. you will never find working class people 
uh, fighting uh, for uh, causes that were taken up by the left. Now you have uh, uh, politically correct Arundhati Roy types and uh, philo uh, philosophically green movement by Greta, or, uh, you know, what was her, that singer, uh, Rihanna. Everyone's become left who has nothing to offer like your vice president in uh, the United States. She just laughs every time you ask a serious question. She hid the fact she was Hindu for so many years and wanted to be known as black. And then her black father said, I'm not gonna come to you to your oath taking ceremony, you're a fraud. You're not aware of that. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> she just working. had to eat Italy, Italy. And all the Indians voted for her. So left, say, yeah, uh, Nikhil Rama. <laughs> you don't have people who, in the, you know, who are dedicated in a practical way to effect change. Mm -hmm. Nahiya Kumar has to continue to remain a student to be on the left, right? There is no place where he can then move on because the parties have become redundant. They cannot offer the the solution if okay. states sponsored pricing and bank they have to the left had to have an exercise in their thinking what went wrong okay. how did an idiot like ziaul haq pull the carpet from under their feet and topple the soviet union of course the crisis in chernobyl and the nuclear uh, crisis that is what really led to uh, the Soviets having to run away from Afghanistan because the entire country's entire GDP was being spent to stop a nuclear reactor from exploding. Millions of tons of cement had to be poured over there. All this happened during the same time. The left, unfortunately, is caught in either the rigor of textbook communism not understanding the context within Marx understood uh, society's economics as the basis of forming history of uh, how uh, people progress, uh, what are the means of production and all that. Uh, and if you really want to have uh, uh, social justice, then you, you find it in Finland where you get three years of maternity leave or you can have 30 year old prime ministers or in Norway or most of the Scandinavian countries who are social democrat as against socialists because they eliminated any sense that dissent will be punished. Yes. At its greatest glory in Islam, dissent was re represented by uh, the gentleman who screamed out in Baghdad and al haq I am the truth. And the caliph said that you can change this, but he refused and he was beheaded and his head rolled down the river. And that's, those are turning points that when you have to, when you get killed because of your, what you think. So in Pakistan, they go to the homes of journalists and beat them up and tell them, it's uh, girlfriend ke bhai ni mara isko, you know? Um, it's this happened day, just day before yesterday. You will never get a progressive thing when you subjugate people uh, into fear of authority. Everyone has the right to go on its on his or her own salt march, and no one has a right to stop anyone from thinking or asking questions. The left today has joined with the Islamists. I call this phenomena Sharia Bolshevism. <laughs> Everywhere you find uh, the leftists, even in Toronto where I live, I cannot differentiate the stands between uh, jamaat -e islami or the Communist Party. They're the same. They're seen at the same places. Their only goal is death to America. And if Khomeini says debt to America, they're with Khomeini. Otherwise, 
किताब कम छपती हैं ऑथर ज्यादा हो गए हैं and what's the fun in reading a book if you can chat on the iphone you know mazak to usme hai na so we made newspapers die we, we are making any intellectual discourse uh, unfashionable not many people are going to watch this show but it ka bore kar diya abhi lagao kaun banega kya hai aapka show wo हम करोड़पति नहीं बन सकते हमको इतना गारंटी है इफ यू डू इन थिंकिंग एंड इफ यू ट्राई टू क्रिटिक नॉट क्रिटिसाइज कि वाई इज इट वाई वाई डू यंग गर्ल्स in the indian subcontinent not have the right to fall in love i'm serious the whole world that's the greatest thing that happens when you see uh, an 18 20 year old uh, with a boyfriend idhar to bola chote bhai ko saath bhej dete ke dekho kidhar gayi thi leke aao wapas is ghar mein aa rahe is this is this what we have evolved look at us we look at a sculpture look at a Uh, views of sexuality and then we adopted from the muslims the ghungat you can't even understand whether the woman is coming towards you or going away burke mein aag to dikhti hai ghungat kaise par the ghost chala ja raha hai ye sab solve karna hai believe me ye ownership of women ye india mein bhi hai और फिर हो भी जाती है तो सास आती है साथ curse never ends in our part of the world and how what sort of children will be born same out of fear out of this out of that iska ye karo uska wo karo khana pakao uske liye iske liye aaj kitchen se nikal jao tumhari come on we are better than that just the sculptures tell us we are better than that very true sir very mm-hmm. wonderfully said mm-hmm. and Uh, I mean, really, so talking to you. If I were to tell you something very personally, I would say that my entire family is such a big fan of you. Really. But you didn't get the bad chick to get up, did you? Motorcycle, then the jacket you wear. Someone told me. ये बेटियां खराब हो जाती मैंने क्या इनके किस पाक प्लस खराब हो जाते हैं इनका क्या चीज खराब होती है कि ठीक है जब बच्चियां आजाद होंगी तब हिंदुस्तान आजाद होगा उस वक्त तक कुछ नहीं होता उस वक्त पे दा चाहते चाचा ताए बैठे होते उनका पी रहे होते और गालियां दे रहे होते हो जाएगा ठीक हो जाएगा हाँ, तो हमारी उम्र में तो नहीं हुआ तो ऊपर से देखेंगे फिर क्या हो रहा है भैया नीचे बर्ड्स आई व्यू सो धन्यवाद इट वाज इट वाज ऑनेस्टली वेरी वेरी इल्यूमिनेटिंग वेरी एजुकेटेड स्पीकिंग टू इट धन्यवाद Uh, we yeah. truly are blessed to have you on our show. Thank you very much for now. You take care. Good afternoon. Namaskar. Namaskar. Good afternoon. Namaste. We hope you enjoyed this Chitti Media content. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content, and to support our work, please visit. cittti.net धन्यवाद नमस्कार <laughs>